Good evening, good evening, and welcome along to the big show here on NVTV. So, coming up on the show this week, we'll be meeting country music star Aidan Quinn. Ryan Moffat will be dropping by to tell us all about Uplift Performing Arts. Brenda Palmer Winter and Antoinette Morelli will be telling us all about their new show, Keep Telling Me Lies. And we'll have live music in the studio from the accordion playing country music star Brandon McPhee. But starting things off this week, some more live music, and this time a band from Belfast to doing really well on the circuit at the moment. So ladies and gentlemen, here are Fox Colony. Tear all the supermarkets down Cause they keep breeding round this town With all the colleagues wheeling cages The cardboard and them in me have this in feeling Walking around in little packs, drinking coffee, padding backs, making profit by the hour, making me feel I'm in need of a shower. You enjoy telling me what to do, spewing all of your intolerant views. You're the one who belongs in a cage, me in the cardboard, and nothing wrong. Plastic got me down, along with Facebook and the crown. So feed my short attention span with all the dog pictures you can. And Google tell me how to be strong and smart and happy. Then sell my daddy for the highest price. Tell him I'm not feeling nice. Cause I've been stuck in my heart. You keep taking my my time. How can it be more kind? When you keep taking mine, you keep taking Now this year Uplift Performing Arts are celebrating 10 years in the business. We're going to find out about what they do, what they've got coming up and uh, the man behind it, Ryan Moffat, joins me in the studio. Ryan, how are you sir? I'm very well, very good to be here. So tell us about Uplift, for people who don't know, tell us about the organisation. Close to 10 years ago, uh, my wife and I uh, came back from studying over in California uh, and at that point there wasn't a lot going on in our local area around the Midden East Antrim area with to do with the arts. Uh, so we kind of thought we'd love to come home, we'd love to start something up to kind of build confidence and self-esteem in young people uh, and in this specific generation. Um, and then from there just took a whim, decided to go ahead with it, I uh, came back, uh, went to my local church and asked them could we use their venue. Um, and then from then it's just kind of blossomed into this beautiful creation that it is today. So we'll talk about what's happening in just a moment, but let's get a bit about your background story sure. because you've had quite an exciting life that's kind of took you all over <laughs> the world yeah. before this, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was very privileged that whenever I was at uh, Carrick Fergus College at the time, um, I was a percussionist and involved in the music and stuff and my teacher knew I could sing uh, and she wanted me to get involved with this group called the Young Americans who came to the school to do a music outreach program. 
at that point I was very much not involved in wanting to get into it but uh, they did this big drum opener and it got me hooked um, and I was very much involved in the workshop from then sang a solo in the show and the director at the time Jared Sheehan he uh, he really liked my voice and said is this something you would like to do go into the performing arts industry there's a lot to it um, and it, it kind of just made me perk up a wee bit and think, actually, this could be a lot of fun. And then more and more he told me about the organization, the more I thought, yeah, this would be really cool. So went over to Michigan, auditioned for the main company directors, and was very fortunate to be the first person from north or south of Ireland asked to join. So then took the big leap, uh, moved to California for three years. What a life to yeah. live in California. <laughs> like, that was class. I was 18 years old and got on the plane and by mom, by dad. And, uh, and yeah, just lived the California life and studied the arts. Um, and then towards the end of it, um, I was able to audition to go out on touring cast. So went all over Europe, um, teaching it with this organization, um, Japan, all over the States. And then uh, for, for at that time in the group, to go to the Boyne Highland Dinner Theatre was the big one because it really pushed you as a performer to be the best that you could be. You were performing six nights a week and that was over two months. So it was fairly intense as well. Um, and then I was able, I was casted to go onto that cast. For me, I'd done a full circle in the group. I'd done everything I wanted to do. Um, but being a bit of a home bird, I kind of thought, thought let's go back and let's see so if we're good. I was going to say, why are you sitting in California? <laughs> why do you decide, let's go home to Carrick Fergus? California. And then the first part is, I married an American girl who's from California and brought her here to Northern Ireland. And how does she feel when she arrives in Carrick Fergus? She's all right now. It took her a while to warm, but uh, she's good now. We still get to travel back with the girls and, uh, and see family and stuff, so we still get that. So. so obviously things are going really well for Uplift. You're 10 years in the business now. I suppose when you started off, there wasn't many other companies around, so you kind of paved the way for other groups today, didn't you? Yeah, I think there was other little drama societies and things based around uh, areas, uh, uh, but there was nothing that kind of involved all of the arts in one. So the singing, dancing, acting, musical theater, instruments, the whole heap. Um, and with my training, I kind of thought, this is something I could really sink my teeth into. Um, so came back, I knew that Belfast would be a hard market because there'd be a lot of other like, or, or just, uh, companies like the BOC and other things like that that are already established in Belfast. So I thought, let's start around the Mid East Antrim area and let's try and bring it in there and then branch out into to what it is now you know tell us about some of the shows you've done over the past 10 years what's been the highlights well our dinner theater in the summer is always a highlight it's always our kind of real intensive one um so it's kind of like a three-course meal a two-act show in the summer um we we performed at the waterfront for a group called focus fest which getting into the big waterfront stage was great um and then each year we go back to the theater at the mill to do a variety or showtime or broadway blitz or or any of those kind of productions they're always fab but i would say that the highlight for me is with having the american contact um about four years ago an american exchange artist came over through our council because uh, our sister city is danville kentucky um, so they sent somebody over, the mayor at the time called me, we had a show, brought them to the show, and then after the show, the, the director said, I need to get you to, to America, you, this, this project needs to come over. And at that point, you're thinking, yeah, sure, why not? Okay, all right, um, thinking it's a bit of a dream. But literally two weeks later, the theater manager at the West T Hill called me and said, uh, one of our board directors said, you need to come over here, so we're gonna make it happen. And that's been going on nearly five years. We have a, a, a group going over again this summer. And because of the, the, the connection between the sister cities, now Uplift and the West E Hill have this, this sister kind of program. Uh, and we'll take casts over there to run our Shamrock program. Mm -hmm. And basically it's a big music outreach, but with the cultural exchange. So that's definitely one of the highlights. And you're telling me as well, you've got some kind of summer camp thing running this year as well, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we run a camp down at Ganaway Activity Centre. So again, the American ethos is coming yeah. back into it here. You know that whole uh, camp where you go away from your parents for a week, you do a whole pile of activities, you sleep over, you get your food. Um, so it's the same kind of thing, but obviously then in the morning, you do master classes with our teachers um, and then put on a show towards the end of the week as well. 
And then I believe you're going to the Mac as well. Yeah, that's show. a really exciting project. Yeah. That's our first time ever going into the Mac. Uh, I must say the staff there are wonderful to work with. They've been really, really great. Uh, we're trying to attract uh, an older, more mature cast because the rehearsals are only from the 8th to the 15th of August. So it's a short period of time to put a full two-act show together. It's very high energy, lots of music, lots of uh, new musicals involved in that. And basically, uh, we, we've also a guy, uh, a guy I used to direct in The Young Americans called Shiden Woods. He's from Canada, uh, but he now works for Fred Astaire's Latin and Ballroom Dance Company in wow. Toronto. <laughs> and I've managed to get him to come over and help choreograph the whole thing. So I'm like, yes. <laughs> so that's, that's another cool thing, because then the students aren't just getting the, the experience of the show. They're getting an experience of an international director as well as us, you yeah. know, so that's really, really cool. And will there be a big 10th birthday party this year? Yeah, the, the, <laughs> we're, yeah we're, we're finally getting a, a, an office in the centre of Carrick. And my first thing is, once we get it all done up, get the team down and say, right, 10 years, what are we doing? How can we make this really, really special? So keep an eye out on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. Brilliant. Well, Ryan, thank you for thank coming you. in. And you must bring some of the cast in next time. We'll yeah, promote the, we'll the show on the back of... for you, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, time for some live music. And this time, a man all the way from Scotland who's here to tell us all about his latest shows. Before that, we're going to hear a live track. So here is Brandon McPhee.
there we go, a fine bit of accordion playing from Brandon McPhee, who joins me now in the studio. Brandon, how are you? Robin, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. Welcome back to Belfast. It's like you're becoming a regular visitor here in Northern Ireland, aren't you? Over the last few years, we've been here back and forth a lot, and it's just like home, really. It's always good to be back in, in Belfast, and certainly everyone's so lovely, as you know already, yeah. so it's, it's always good. So tell us about the piece you just played there. Uh, the first tune I played was actually the tunes that I won the All Scotland Senior Accordion Championships with. It's a medley of tunes, Bill Black Stanley, Arlene Bowie and Jim Money. And I learnt this set when I was about 16 okay. and performed it in the All Scotland when I was 17 in the seniors. And it became one of my favourite sets because I ended up winning with the set. So that um, will always be a memory I'll always remember. And of course, you were performing for many years before that. I think you were 11 when you re released your first album, weren't you? Well, I started accordion at the age of 10, and my granddad had taught me my first few tunes on the accordion, and then took weekly accordion lessons after that. And School was all in between this, so, but the main goal for me from the age of 10 was to become full-time in music, right. play my accordion, and just as much as I did, I did a lot of hours each day. And later on in my teenage years, the singing came. However, it's always something I've loved. A lot of people will probably remember you from the Jimmy Shand uh, touring show that you had uh, recently as well. That was a big success, wasn't it? We really, really enjoyed doing the Jimmy Shand story. We're still actually performing it throughout different theatres in the UK and Ireland. Uh, Jimmy Shand being one of my all-time heroes, and Will Starr is another accordionist who is up there in my, my top ten accordionists. And the Jimmy Shan story was basically to promote the life and music of the great man himself. Yes, and yeah. myself and the, the guys in the band play some of the music in the show that made Jimmy Shan the worldwide name. And we were very lucky to have Dave Anderson on live narration. Now, Dave talked all about his life throughout childhood until his, his death. And certainly Dave was uh, leading one of the lead roles in Gregory's Girl, which is a very famous film. I remember it well, yeah. Is that right? Yes. And he was part of Still Game and some early episodes of Doctor Who. So all this in the mix made the Jimmy Shan story. And our first debut, actually, was in the Grand Opera House here in Belfast. Right, yeah. And we then did various shows throughout Scotland and theatres, and we're just back from a tour in England. And it's certainly great to see how many people still remember the man himself. So are you promoting a new album at the moment? Well, we've had various albums out. However, the last album, which is All I Want To Do, is actually a mixture. So there's, it's pretty much 70% country music and maybe 30% Scottish music. So I've got a few accordion tracks on there, along with a couple of Scottish songs. In fact, one of them is all about the life and music of Jimmy Shand. So with this and our Jimmy Shand shows, we thought it would be a great idea to record an album of the Jimmy Shand story. Yes. So we recorded all the tracks that we recorded and it's proved to be very popular, which we're delighted about because as long as everyone enjoys the music and well, purchases the music and maybe passes along to friends, that means the world to us and means that we can keep going in future years. I was having a look down the list of all the gigs that you've played over the years as well and I see Prince Charles keeps uh, popping up a lot. Is he a big fan? Well, he has told me so, <laughs> which is um, always a good thing. It was due to Robert Lovey in Scotland who got me the chance to play for Prince Charles in Burke Hall, which is his home in Aberdeenshire. Right. And I composed a tune called the Burke Hall Ball and got the chance to present it to Prince Charles and Camilla there and since played various times for them. I was in Buckingham Palace wow. performing and had, have been since back in Burke Hall and Dumfries House, which is another organisation that is owned by Charles as well. So it's, it's always great to meet up with them and he's, he's so down to earth as well. And that's what makes it incredible for me because you're standing there with Prince Charles and you think, I can't believe who I'm talking with. Yeah. And believe it or not, I even got the chance to do a Dashing White Sergeant with him. Right. And Camilla, I got to do a Gay Gordons, which is some dances. Now, I'm no dancer, <laughs> but when you're in that situation, you, you just want to have a dance. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're coming back to Northern Ireland for some gigs towards the end of the month, aren't That's you? right. I believe the dates are the 27th of April. We're in the Denadry Hotel. That's the Ulster Scots that is... Uh, running that one and then we're in the Porta Down Town Hall with special guests Manson Grant and the great Crawford Bell. Oh wow. And after that we're going over to the Hot Country Awards Show in Cavan which is run very successfully by Hugh O'Brien and he has some of the biggest acts ever on his show in the United Kingdom anyway and it's certainly great to be back there. We've, we've been there for the last, we've been the last, this will be our fourth consecutive year there. 
You're going to do one more before you leave us. Now, you're usually traveling with a five-piece band. That's uh, right. Today, you're not, but you have got Crawford Bell with you. That's right. You? Crawford has been playing rhythm guitars and harmony with us for a number of years now. I first met Crawford when I was 11 in Aberdeen, and we've become very close friends, and I've been working together a lot over the years, and it's actually an honor to be seen with Crawford on this video. He's, he's a person I look up to so much and have so much respect for. So what are you going to do for us this time? We're going to do a song that I recorded on my second country album. It was one that was co-written by Billy Ray Cyrus. It's not really been played over in the United Kingdom, I believe, other than ourselves who had recorded it. It's one called The Milkman's Eyes. OK. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we go one more time. Here is Brandon McPhee. Lately I've been hearing lots of rumours about Young Junior's real identity Someone else's wood's mixed in our wood pile And you'd like to stoke the fire after I leave I sure had my doubts and my suspicion Cause Junior wasn't hard to recognize We first brought him home to meet our neighbors they said that baby's got the milkman's eyes Well, I know Junior's got the milkman's eyes At this time I ain't believing no more lies I'm leaving you, there ain't no alibis I know Junior's got the milkman's eyes I've got light blue eyes just like my daddy You've got dark brown eyes just like your mom That baby's eyes are green and slightly slanted Like the milkman that comes by when I'm not home So honey, go and get yourself a lawyer Cause there ain't no way that we can reconcile when Junior cries a night without his bottle Milk's the only thing that makes him smile Well, I know Junior's got the milkman's eyes At this time I ain't believing no more lies I'm leaving you, there ain't no alibis I know Junior's got the milkman's eyes well, I know Junior's got the milkman's eyes At this time I'm believing no more lies I'm leaving you, there ain't no alibis I know Junior's got the milkman's eyes Yeah, I know Junior's got the milkman's eyes So we're going to find out now all about a world premiere, ladies and gentlemen. It's a show called Keep Telling Me Lies, which opens at the MAC. We're going to find out all about it because uh, Brenda Winterpalmer and Antoinette Morelli join me in the studio. Brenda and Antoinette, welcome. Thank you. Brenda, we'll start with you. This show has taken quite a few years to get up and running, really, hasn't it? Yeah. I first started work on this play about 2005. So many years ago was that? 14. Um, um, I... Antoinette came to me and told me her mother's story and she'll tell you all about her family. Uh, her dad was the show band singer and um, her mum Kathleen more or less stayed at home and kept the family together. And just the stories were so wonderful. And we also interviewed a lovely lady called Muriel Day um, who was um, a show band singer herself and Ireland's uh, entry to the Eurovision Song Contest way back in the day. Um, and she told us all sorts of stories. So the ho a whole picture began to emerge that it wasn't just about the boys. In fact, if it hadn't been for the girls, the boys wouldn't have been able to do what they were able to do. So it really is the first time a female has been told from a female perspective Absolutely. then? Absolutely. It's done from the point of view of a female performer uh, in a show band. The show band's called the Odyssey Show Band. Don't think they ever existed. Right. Um, 
If they do, I'll probably get sued. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the wife of one of the show band singers, they happen to be sisters. And they meet um, after um, a long separation uh, at the beginning of the 90s in rather tragic circumstances and old scores are settled. Antoinette, we're going to come to you because obviously you've been involved in the project for a long time as well, but uh, your family has, has a long history of, uh, <laughs> of show bands, including the legendary Tony Morelli. That's right, Robin, yeah. Um, my dad was Tony Morelli. Uh, so I basically grew up um, in the environment of entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, and just what Brenda was saying, you know, my I was a baby, I'm the baby, so I have three older siblings who very much would have been very young when my dad was out touring the world mm -hmm. with the Witnesses show band. And they had a very different experience than I did growing up because my dad would have been more present. He was more on the cabaret circuit then. Yes, yeah. Um, so when mum would tell these stories, I was, you know, sort of bewildered and horrified at the same time because that wasn't my experience. It was my elder siblings. And it just struck me so much how many sacrifices she made because she absolutely adored my father. She yeah. loved him. And she made her sacrifices so he could pursue his dream. And I know all about that, being in this industry, as you know yourself, you know, or uh, whoever we happen to be with, partners or whatever, they do make sacrifices. Yeah. And I think it was just a story I felt had to be told. And my mum, bless her, she passed away last year. Um, she was very much involved in the development of it and telling her stories. And because it was difficult, really difficult times. I mean, Because if, if you're in a successful show band, mm. I mean, you're on the road constantly. Yeah. You were in that tour bus. And I know yeah. for your dad, being in The Witnesses, mm. it, they're all over the world. They yeah. were in America, they were with Elvis yeah. and everything, yeah, weren't right. they? Yeah, you know, in the Bahamas, so. yeah. I mean, it was such, I mean, we, we laughed recently after we were going through mum's stuff, you know, and um, dad would send her postcards from places he was touring. And he would put a little X and say, this is my room that I'm staying in now. I'll just go and have a lie down before the show. Mm -hmm. You know, that was all normal, you know, and just the, I suppose the glamour of that lifestyle in contrast to the, the terrible, the, it was quite grim, my mum's life really, because it was during the troubles as yes, well. Yeah. You know, um, well, there must have been a great love between them because so many marriages probably would have failed with well, all that absolutely. stuff going on and stuff, but yeah, they survived yeah. that. Yeah, they did. I mean, people said, Mum, why did you stick up? Do you know? And she said, Well, I loved them and you know, my kids, my, my the, us kids, that was my mum's whole life, really, you know. Um, and you often wonder what kind of a, they, they had gone to England, they'd moved to Birmingham, you know, she just never had a sort of pursued her own dreams, I yeah. felt, you know. Um, she was always in the background. My mum was Tony Morelli's wife. This is Tony Morelli's wife. It wasn't, this is Kathleen. Yes, oh, that's yeah. Tony Morelli's wife. Even I'm talking just the few months before she passed, I had her out some morning. I said, that's Tony Morelli's wife, you know? Yeah. So it was like her, her identity was through my father, you know? So Brenda, what can we expect from the show? Tell us about some of the characters that we're looking forward to seeing on stage. Well, the, the central characters are two sisters, um, Lena and Rose, and they are married each of them married show band performers who, who are members of the Odyssey show band. Um, and uh, we see them in their, uh, in their 40s and they meet at the Floral Hall, outside the decrepit Floral Hall, and in a series of flashbacks, their lives unfold and it's against the background of the music. So what you get in the play is the transformation of this dingy, neglected building through the magic of theatre into a palace of light and music and fun. Um, the play is both funny and touching and tragic in, 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 in a number of ways. But what we can promise is a really good night's evening. Well, Antoinette, it's been a long time in the making. How do you yeah. think you're going to feel on that opening night? There's no words to describe it. I mean, I, it, I really did fill up and I just I just want my mum and dad to be proud and I know they they will be. I, I believe that obviously it's inspired by their stories. It's not exactly their story, but it's very much inspired. And um, so I just absolutely cannot wait. I cannot wait to get stuck into rehearsals with this wonderful director <laughs> <laughs> um, who gets the best out of me every time. So um, yeah, bring it on. Bring I'm excited. On. I can't wait to see this show and I really can't. <laughs> Give us all the details. When and where can we see it? You can see it uh, between Thursday the 9th of May and Sunday the 12th of May at the MAC. 
and there are uh, evening performances, but there are also two matinees on Saturday and Sunday, so you've no excuse. Brilliant. I will be there. Good. Thank, Thank you so you much for coming in and telling so us all about it. We really look forward to it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. So it's time for our What's On Guide, where we take a look at what's happening throughout Belfast and beyond over the next week or so. We're starting in Lisburn this week on the 18th of April and Easter Fantasia at the Island Arts Centre. It's an enchanted evening of music starring soprano Julia Clark and special guests. And you can expect many classical and show favourites to give a wonderful start to your Easter weekend. Moving on to the 20th of April and Nathan Carter makes a welcome return to the Millennium Forum in Derry with his new concert tour. So expect a sensational night from Ireland's top entertainer with hits old and new. Join Alex the Lion, led by X Factor 2016 winner Matt Terry, along with Marty the Zebra, Melman the Giraffe, Gloria the Hip Hip Hippo, and of course those hilarious plotting penguins as they bound onto the stage in the musical adventure of a lifetime. Madagascar the Musical comes to the Grand Opera House in Belfast from the 23rd until the 27th of April. Join six of your top country music stars in one super country and gospel show at Theatre at the Mill on the 24th of April. Mick Flavin, Matt Levy, Richie Remo, Sean Cuddy and local show band great Crawford Bell will be joined on stage by Celtic Storm for the country and gospel show. And finally for now, if you want to catch a movie in cinemas this weekend, then why not try Red Joan? The year is 2000 and Joan Stanley, led by Judi Dench, is living in a contented retirement in suburbia at the turn of the millennium and her tranquil life is suddenly disrupted when she's arrested by MI5 and accused of providing intelligence to communist Russia. At Cambridge you were known to consort with communists. It must be Joan. I was never a member. Who politicised you then? My little comrade. They think that you might be part of some Cambridge spy ring. It's like a nightmare. I can't believe it's happening. Imagine one atom split. Producing huge amounts of energy. War ending bomb. The Russians need to help. The bomb must be shared. When are you going to realize you're wasting your time? Because we're not, are we, Mrs. Stanley? Now, my next guest was always destined to go into the music business. That's because his mother is uh, the queen of Irish country, Philomena Begley. He's also a great singer-songwriter himself. He's got a brand new album out, which we're going to find out all about now, because Aidan Quinn joins me in the studio. Aidan, how are you, sir? I'm fabulous, Robin. Thank you very much for having me in here today. So you get fed up with people always saying about Philly first. No, and then you no way. Uh, you never, you never, I could never deny my mother. Do you know what I mean? Um, like I'll go as far to tell you as um, you love being known as Philomena Begley's son. Of sure. course, I, yes, yeah. I enjoy the wee bit of attention. Yes. There's yeah. no point in me telling you yeah, any different yeah, because yeah, I do. Yeah. Like I would always find there when, I, if when myself and the wife was out together, you know, and somebody would come over and say, hello, how are you, are you Philomena's son? Sure, I should be at my night. Yes, I'm, yeah. hap I'm happy out. Do you know what I mean? I just I enjoy it. There's nobody more prouder of Philomena Begley than what I am. Ah, oh, brilliant. And so I you must have had a great time growing up with all this country music around you, with your parents in country music, and you must have been meeting all the greats at that time as well. I had, growing up as the son of, of um, the Queen of Country Music, it was great. All that era of people, mummy's now. I'll call her mummy because it didn't do Daniel or Donald any harm. Yeah, so right. we'll talk yeah, about yeah. mummy. So we'll talk about mummy. <laughs> Philomena Begley, Jean Stewart, Big Tom, T.R. Dallas, you know, all the Foster and Allens, all them guys, Roly Daniels and everyone else, the fun them guys seemed to have when, when they would all get together. Yeah. There was a great camaraderie amongst the musicians all in, back, back then. Ah, and come here, there still is to this day, don't get me wrong. Let's talk about your new album, because it's out now, and um, it's a real mixture of songs this time round, isn't it? It's everything from old country to new country. There's some original stuff on it, to, uh, there's a lot of Irish stuff on it, there's gospel stuff on it, and it's just a, it's just a wee mixture, and I'm, I've really enjoyed putting it together. I, I always thought, down through the years, that um, I was always a Merle Haggard fan, I was always a George Jones fan, as most people are, and Gareth Brooks, and all most... I was going to say most recently, but that's nearly 20, 30 years ago. <laughs> but uh, but um, 
the Josh Turner, which will be recently, he's only 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I always kind of thought of myself as uh, singing country music, real country music. But then I suppose this past few years, I kind of discovered that I can have a wee bit of kind of Irish ornamentation. Mm -hmm. So we recorded a couple of recorded songs like Hard Times, Grace, mm -hmm. um, stuff that I have, as my mother would say, a bit of nya in it. Yes. Do you know what I mean? There's a bit of nya. <laughs> That's a great phrase, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time we were doing a, I was a, a judge on a, a, it was search for a, search for a star competition. It was actually down in Wexford, mm -hmm. but um, I had Mary Byrne. Mm -hmm. You know, Mary Byrne was on yes. the X Factor. She was on one side of me. And there's a couple of there's a couple of actresses from the Dublin show Fair City yeah. and stuff with me, and they were looking and they're asking my opinion. Do you see on what do you think of this artist, this act mm -hmm. on singing? You know, and I was like, you know, you've got great ornamentation there now, and I like your Irish your Irishness. And I was trying to think of I come from the country. I had <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't educated on on fancy words. You know, yes, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, the only way I can explain it is you've got a great nya. <laughs> Well, the whole thing erupted, <laughs> and it was brilliant because the whole audience was with me because they all knew what I was talking yes, about. You know yeah. what I mean? And then Mary Borden beside me, and poor Mary nearly fell over her seat. She was laughing her way. Could you imagine on the X Factor? Could you imagine Louis yes. Walsh or somebody turning around and going, he should do it. He should you know, do it. sitting beside Simon Cowell, going, "There's one thing about you. You've got a great nya." <laughs> <laughs> but Mary nearly fell over her seat out of it, but it was great fun. It was great fun. <laughs> and of course, as well as performing, you're working behind the scenes as well. You have this great entertainment promotions company now as well. Yes, yeah, Millbrook Entertainment. Millbrook Entertainment was, was formed there in uh, 2016. Uh, we've been going great guns. Mm -hmm. Most recently with uh, Cleona Hagen. Yeah. We took Cleona and I, Cleona was, Cleona was a, great, a great artist. Just recently f uh, finished the, the Dancing with the Stars, yes, there, the yeah. Irish version of Dancing with the Stars, and done great. Mm -hmm. She got to the final of it, which was a great, great achievement. Mm -hmm. And um, Things, things is going good. And of course, you're still out on the road with, with your mum as well, aren't you? And mum, we're doing a few dates with mum. And most recently now, we're coming up in the near future. I think it's starting the end of May. We're out with um, Philomena and Ray Lenham. Mm -hmm. And my cousin, Andrea. I'm looking forward to working yes. out with Andrea. Andrea Begley, Andrea yes. Begley. Of course, my other cousin. Sure, we're all in Malachy Kush. We do, yes, a, few, we do course, a few things yes, with Malachy. Yes. You know Malachy, well. I know Malachy, yeah. And, um, Sure, we're a very musical family. So your new album, it's out now, and I know you're promoting the Chris Christopherson song on the album as well, Yes, Why Me, Lord? Mm -hmm. Why Me, Lord? Come here, I think when anybody listens to the song, you'll know why, you'll know why it probably would grab you. It's, uh, there's a beautiful sentiment to it. Mm -hmm. It's a great song, and um, Chris Christopherson, sure, what more can I say? And whenever I listened to the sentiment of it, I thought, this is a song I'm going to have to record. Brilliant. Any gigs coming up that we should know about? I suppose the closest thing we have the Phil and Ray Lanham tour that's starting at the end of April and it's happening in all the theatres all around the north and it's Philomena Begley, Ray Lanham, Andrea Begley and myself. Great lineup. Yeah. And um, it's always, we do it every year and it's run by, for any information look at Michael McGill Entertainment and um, it's, we've been doing it now, we've been doing it now nearly 10 years. Right, yeah. But it's always, every, it's always been sold out everywhere we go, it's always been sold out this past 10 years which is a credit to the two acts, Philomena and Ray. And of course, Andrea as well. Yeah. And um, I'm really looking forward to being involved in that. And um, things is looking good for the future. And I hope the album sells well. And I hope you promote it very well on your show. Of course I will. <laughs> of course I will. Aidan, thank you so much. And the very Robert, best of luck with the album. Thank you very much for having me. So a big thank you to Aidan and of course, all my guests on the big show this week. Now to play us out one more time, here are Fox Colony. See you next week. I am a servant in a room full of kings. I am the laughter that heartache can bring. And I've got your number, so I'm calling you out. You've got a fever, the head full of dry.
we are, we are. We are, we are so to so many things the truth isn't one of them or the sense that it brings we had happier times before they appeared before complex before all the beer We are, we are We are, we are So fragile